This video will give you a short introduction to um, the theories of assets and bases and how they developed over um, the centuries. So earlier in history, chemists used to use the advanced scientific method of tasting to determine whether a substance was an acid or a base. If a substance tasted sour, then it was classified as an acid and if it tasted bitter, it was classified as a base. So, this obviously wasn't a scientific concept and not all acids and bases can be tasted since they are they can be lethal depending on their dosage. So the first scientific concept of acids and bases was provided by someone named Lavoisier. He was a French chemist. I forgot his first name. I think it was Antoine. I'm not sure if that's how we spell his name or not, but yeah. So the first scientific concept of acids and bases was provided by Antoine and Lavoisier in 1776. And so his knowledge of acids and bases was mainly restricted to oxo acids. Now oxo acids are acids which contain only oxygen. Oxo acids only contain oxygen. So H2SO4 which contain oxygen, sorry, not only oxygen. So H2SO4 contains oxygen, H3PO4 contains oxygen as well, or HNO2. So his knowledge was restricted to only these acids, acids which contain oxygen. So his theory defined acids and um, bases on the basis of oxygen. So what he said was that acids, substances which have oxygen are acids. So if any substance behaves like an acid, then that substance must contain oxygen. So at the time, chemists were not aware of the true nature of hydrohalic acids. And by hydrohalic acids, I mean acids in which hydrogen is bonded to a halide, a halogen. So for example, HF or HCl, HBr, HI. So these are called hydrohalic acids. So chemists were not um, aware of the true composition of these acids and so what this guy Henry, not Henry sorry, and one said, he said that if these, sub these substances behave like acids, so they must contain oxygen. And this th definition of acids um, like ruled over chemistry for 30 years until 1810. So in 1810, there was another guy, um, his name was Humphrey Davy. Let's write his name down. He published an article and he also gave a series of lectures in which he provided proof that acids such as H2S, H2DE, they behave like acids and that they did not contain oxygen. So he provided proof that these substances behave like acids and they did not contain oxygen. So this proved that Antoine's theory was wrong. And then Sir Humphrey Davy, he, um, he gave more lectures on the nature of acids. So in 1838, 1838, there was another guy named, I don't know how to spell his name, but this is how we write it. Justice Vaughan. I, don't, I can't remember certainly. So this guy proposed that an acid is a hydrogen containing compound whose hydrogen can be replaced by metal. So this definition was very popular and it remained in use for over 50 years. So it remained till use, it remained till use till 1890. But this was replaced by another theory known as Arrhenius' theory of acids and base. So this is the theory which started all this is Arrhenius. He was a chemist. Yeah, I think that's how you write it. Okay. So according to him, an Arrhenius acid, he called acids Arrhenius acids. So an Arrhenius acid is an acid, is a substance that dissociates in water to form H plus ions. So any substance which 
when dissolved in water gives us H plus ions that would be classified as an Arrhenius acid and similarly for bases he said that if any substance is dissolved in water and it dissociates into OH minus ions or forms OH minus ions and that substance would be classified as a base so that's what Arrhenius said and the Arrhenius definition of acids and bases is restricted to only aqueous solutions and by aqueous solutions I mean solution in, solutions in which the solvent is water so this was one of his one of this theory's limitations it could not explain the acidic nature of substances when they were dissolved in solvents other than water and it also couldn't explain the acidic nature of substances such as CO2 or SO3 or NO2 because according to when these substances they react with water they form acids and according to Arrhenius theory acids are those substances when dissolved in water they release H plus ions but these substances do not contain hydrogen so where is this H plus ion coming from so they could not explain so this theory could not explain the homocytic nature of CO2, SO3 and other such compounds and, also couldn't, and it also couldn't explain the acidic nature of substances in solvents other than water so even though this theory was incomplete it did play an important role in shaping the modern acid based theory which we use today and it's important to note that sometimes the purpose of theories even if theories aren't 100% correct they still play an important role to, um, to create new and more correct theories so this theory or any theory he, this was a very popular theory and it led to another theory called Bronsted-Lowry acid base theory Bronsted-Lowry acid base theory so before delving into that theory I'll tell you guys a bit about Vante um, Arrhenius so he he wrote up his ideas on acids dissociating to water as part of his thesis when he was in uh, which university he was in Stockholm University I might be wrong but I this was the university so he wrote up his ideas on acids when he was in this university as part of his thesis but this theory was not well received like no chemist did not support this theory and his um, work was awarded to the lowest possible class of a degree but later as time passed his work gradually gained recognition and he received one of the earliest Nobel Prizes in chemistry and he received his Nobel Prize in 1903 one of the first Nobel Prizes in chemistry so yeah this was a pretty important theory after this comes the bronsted lowry acid based theory I'll show you how the scientists look like so this was Bronsted, Johannes Bronsted and Thomas Martin Lowry this is Gilbert Lewis by the way he also proposed an acid base theory Gilbert Lewis so the bronsted lowry theory um, accounted for the exceptions proposed by the Arrhenius theory so according to the, Arrhen the exceptions for Arrhenius theory were SO2 um, CO2 actually no not SO2 CO2 the Arrhenius theory could not explain why some substances acted as acids even when dissolved in solvents other than water so according to this theory bronsted lowry theory these two guys said that an acid is a substance which releases S plus ions and a base a base gains H plus ions so bases accept and acids donate so this is how they defined acids and bases and this theory applied to not only water but other solvents as well but this theory had its own limitations such as it still could not explain the acidic nature of substances such as SO3, SO2, SO2, SO3, CO2 and other such substances and the acidic nature of these and AlCl3 so the acidic nature of these substances was explained by Gilbert Newton-Lewis who gave his own acid-based theory 
So these are some of the asset based theories we're gonna learn about. Actual students need to know Gilbert. SL students do not need to learn about the Lewis theory of assets and basis, but both SL and SL students need to know um, the Bronster Lowry theory and both HL students need to know so HL students need to know Lewis theory and Bronster theory. SL students only need to know the Bronster theory.